Good morning and welcome to a little stream on doing a canvas. So, I say little, this could be a long one. <laughs> I have a 12 by 12 mixed media canvas and it's called that because it's got a bit of board underneath the canvas. So if you don't like that feel of the canvas giving, this is quite a good solution. So it still has a bit depth to it, so it's not a canvas board in that sense. But uh, I will just wait for a few more people to join if I carry on. Now I have been having a few issues with the camera this morning. So if you do happen to see any flashes or anything, do let me know, especially if it gets particularly annoying. And I do have a standby option just in case, but the angle is going to be a bit odd. So I'm hoping this one survives the hour. So don't be afraid to say hi and let me know that you're watching. And once we have a few people in, we can get started. Okay, so all this week the DT for Pretty Gets Pretty have been plunged to using a sketch. So this is the sketch we were given and as you can see it has an A4 kind of aspect at the moment but I'm going to be working on a 12 by 12 which means that we have to adapt the ratio of these items to our new size. So you could do that by just stretching it, so it's more of a square format, or you could move that block up that way and that block down that way. So the option really is up to you. Now I have got glove here just in case I decide I'm going to use that. But we'll see how we go. So I've pulled out some of the cut parts from the paper pack and I believe this is on Fiverr Friday. So you're going to want to hop over to the Pretty Gets Gritty website and purchase that one. I've also got a few of the little bits that come out of our Gothic windows that we can use to do our little flags with that are on the sketch. I have some die cuts that we can use as texture and I have spares to the side as well. And originally I was going to put a clock in, but this time I'm going to go for the window. A little change of plan. And finally, you want to have some stencils that you can use. Going on to our background, this is from the Gothic paper release. So this is going to be a bit newer, not I don't believe it's in the same deal. So we're going to want to tear this apart because we want to stretch it so that it fits across our canvas. So let's see if I can zoom out just a little bit. Just so you can see, it is a square canvas, honest. <laughs> and let's start tearing into this. So what I tend to do, first of all, is concentrate on the corners. do this all nice and neat with scissors if you really want to but to be honest for the effect that we want you're just as well to get in there with your fingers and give it a little tear. Now this will be easier in one direction than the other just the nature of paper. I'm tearing it towards me as well so I get that nice white edge. If you want to remove that if you go in the other direction you should have a nice new coloured edge. So I'm going to pop that one up there, I think. Let's go to the next corner. And again. So this time, if I do it this way, I can just have a coloured edge. And all the bits that I tear off, I tend to keep. <laughs> just for bulking up little bits of texture so if there's bits that I want to just scrunch up and just have popping up a little bit we can do that. 
so I think that might go, let's say there. We've got another big corner bit and we want really want that to be opposite our big section up here. So I'm gonna go back to having the white edge on this one. And morning Linda, morning Mum, morning Deb. And I will hop across the comments on the Pretty Gets Pretty group as well. Hi Jane! So I'm just going to pop down there. Oh, we're getting there. So where you've got something like this, where you've got a lone star, but it's still kind of related to that corner. I'm going to kind of keep that still. With that corner piece. Now we have some other random stars and we can tear those out too and then everything else we can tear into strips. So these here I'm going to just literally go like that <laughs> and let's attack it this way. I'm being mindful of my sketch so it helps if you can work with it in front of you and let's pop that fragment just there like so so to adhere these I'm going to be using some gel medium and you want to use a messy brush canvas to start with and then also some on the back of my paper don't worry about doing a nice neat job because we can push it all down with our brush in a minute so that one's going to go kind of like that get it where you want it and then we're going to give it a nice firm push down with our brush if you need to put a bit more gel medium underneath your edges to stop them curling up, do that. A little bit more. So the canvas board you're working on too does have a texture to it. So that's something to bear in mind with your mediums that you're going to want to put a little bit extra on so it fills all those little grooves. A bit just at the top here. And there we go. The other thing I'm trying to do is also get these layers of gel medium quite thin because we want it to dry reasonably quickly. So if you've got any big blobs, just try and brush those out. we've done gel medium to both our canvas and the paper you get a little bit more wriggle time with it. There we go. And over the top. Seal in all those rough edges. Now, if you had some torn edges that weren't quite sealed, you're going to find that they're going to soak up ink more. 
So when we do come to use our sprays and our dyes, you can expect those to kind of come up a bit darker if they're not sealed. Which may be a look that you want to go for, on the other hand, may not. Just moving that round so that my star is actually a bit more vertical rather than going a bit on the <laughs> So, for those of you who have joined a little bit late, I was saying that my camera today is having a bit of an issue. So if it does start flashing and being a bit weird, do let me know. And morning Carol, I am feeling better than I did yesterday. So yesterday I had a bit of a, a bad head day. But on good news, I did manage to get my book more or less totally finished. Cover is done. It's just proofreading and getting it to where it needs to go to get printed, which is cool. And I probably just overdid it just a little bit to get it done, but. move my mouse out of the way. Okay. Now I do have a big jar of water set to the side so that as soon as I've finished doing this bit I can pop my brush in water. being square you may get to a point where you think actually this might work out better on a different rotation so as long as there's no like mounting screws already put on the back don't be afraid to readjust if you want to okay now if the paper does start to wrinkle up that means that you've water ratio on your gel medium is a little bit too high so what you can do is just let your pop sit open just for a little bit just to help it out but it should be fine You're just going to go back across just make sure that we've got all our blobs of glue are all well and truly brushed out and then hopefully when we actually come to do our spraying it's going to be quite easy for us to just dry that off first okay now i am going to very quickly just wipe around the top of my gel medium because we don't want to seal the lid on. Been there, done that. Not good. Okay. And this pops out over there for now. And in the brush goes into the water. Now, if we were to use that brush now for another piece of paper, then what you would need to do is make sure that you get every bit of that water back out of that brush before you put it back in your gel medium. Just because we don't want any wrinkles that don't need to be there. Okay, so now I'm going to have everybody groaning because ta da! But I just want something that's going to give me some texture. I'm just going to pop this into this corner here. So if we go back to our sketch, we've got something going on down here and something going on up here. So if we take that same approach to our stenciling, 
that means that we're already giving ourselves a basis to work on. So I'm going to go for some thick texture paste. And a palette knife. Doesn't matter which shape, it's whichever suits you better. And let's put that through the stencil just there. So you don't have to get every bit of the stencil and you don't have to get it perfectly level. Be mindful of the fact that not all of this is going to be dry yet so when you're lifting stuff up you can lift your papers up but try not to worry too much so this time we're going to come down here and we're going to use a bit more of this side of the stencil do things in kind of triangles so if we take this edge here I'm just going to put that just there and very carefully lift off so, a little bit more up here and this is where we start to get really kind of random with our stenciling. So I'll turn my stencil 90 degrees. So it's like, that's not going to be the main bit of the texture. It's just there. There's like a background for when we start to put our other templates on top. So a little bit just there, I think, just to use up what's on my palette knife. And then what we have left, we can just go around and actually put that onto the edges of our canvas. So this doesn't have to be in any particular pattern or placement. It is just there to capture some of our sprays in interesting ways. I'm just going to do the same with this stencil here. So again, we're going to have a big section down this section here. So we can go, okay, we might pull this one out here. So I'll concentrate on getting the whole of that section and then just do a few random bits around the outside. So we're getting little hints of that same pattern. like so and we can do the same down here because as I said you want to try and work in little triangles so hopefully you can see that okay maybe not I will move it up so you can see it in a minute so I'm just going to do just the one little patch down there so I'll move it up there so just here Uh, you should have sound, Sam. Can everybody hear me okay? Let me just have a look. Hello? Yep, you should have sound. Can everybody let me know if you can hear me okay? Is it just Sam that's having issues? So Sam, if you hover over the video, oh, this is good, me saying it, you can't hear me. <laughs> um, Carol, can you just let Sam know to touch the um, mute button? It's usually in the bottom right of the video. And that should bring Sam back. Come, 
the camera was playing up, you had me panicking then. <laughs> I was like, no. But I, I know the uh, mic doesn't work on this camera anyway. It pulls it off the other one. Wait just closer to me, so. Okay. So with that done, we're going to give that a quick blast. So I'm going to do that on a low setting on my two-speed heat gun if you've got the old ranger style one so i think it's the heated tool then you can use that so let me just pop the lid on there because we don't want that drying out too much looking for that quick blast So this isn't going to get it perfectly dry. It's going to get dry enough for us to start spraying. So how can you tell this if it's dry? With your gel medium, it's going to go to a nice matte finish rather than being shiny. And that's probably the easiest way that you can tell. When you take your paste, it takes a little bit longer because obviously it's thicker. But you won't have that same transition from shiny to matte. So just give it a little bit longer. starting to dry let's get spraying so I've pulled out some different sprays so I have the saltwater taffy in both the ink and the oxide I have the kitchen mango in the ink and the oxide I have the blush dreams pretty amazing spray and I have dove pearl spray so let's see where we go from there first of all I'm going to move most of my die cuts out of the way <laughs> just because i don't want those getting sprayed just yet so let's go let's go inks first so i undid the paint forgot to undo the sprays Dee -dee -dee. Let's just very quickly get this off here Let's go. So I'm just going to give this a little spray. Now, when you're spraying a large area like this, less is more. So don't try and literally cover the whole thing with your spray. We're just going to do little sections. And the distance that you spray is going to change the pattern. So if you're close to your canvas, you're going to get these little round splodges with lots of spatters. If you're further away, you're going to get a nice soft mist, so your colour's actually going to go further. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, no, Carol, I didn't hear from Tracy all of yesterday, so I just hope she's okay. Um, she was starting to hear me the other day on stream, which was a good start, because she hasn't been able to hear much. And I'm just going to spray that with water, because the water's going to help it start to move a little bit. Okay, so I need a little bit more. There we go. So I want some runs, some drips. So if you're doing that and it's not quite going where you want it to, I think I'm going to go for a little bit more salt water taffy up there. And I kind of fill in the gaps. So if I think, oh, that needs a bit more sparkle up in that corner, I'll do some more of the 
pretty amazing spray. Um, trying not to get with the oxides just yet. So the inks and the pretty amazing spray are going to be nice and translucent. So they're going to allow those colours to kind of still come through from the papers. When we start to move on to oxides, you're going to find that those will actually start to hide some of those background elements. So that's when we can start to play with masking and things like that. Okay. So and let's see if we can give that a bit of a, a dry. And then we can layer on our next layer of colour. So because we're drying this with a heat tool, it's going to get paler. If you want to keep the same intensity of colour, you're better off to let it air dry. But obviously, time is a lot, not on our side when we live. that to create drips between our texture paste. And this is where you're going to start to do your brush strokes as well from your gel medium. Hi. So if you're looking at this and thinking, oh dear, that looks like a hot mess, don't panic just yet. Because your oxides and then your gesso can help pull all these elements together. So I'm just going to tap this off just a little, just to try and help speed up the process just a tad. Just because we are on a time and you don't want to be staying with me for hours on end watching paint dry. <laughs> Just be careful when you're going over things like your texture paste because obviously these are still going to be a little bit damp and we don't want to flatten them too much. Okay. So, I'm going to bring in some of the oxide spray. So, this is Kitsch Flamingo. Okay. And again, I'm going to try and fill in the gaps. So we don't have too much of our white canvas showing through. Now, some of this will inevitably go on your paper. Don't worry too much. So let's just give that a little bit of rotate. If it needs a bit of help moving, that's where we can go back in with our water. And you'll see that that's when your oxide is going to start going and doing what it does best.
water. Try and get most of the gel medium out of it. And I'm just going to tap that off so that we can get some of that moisture out. Let's grab. Oh. I'm going to come in with some white gesso just because I want to lift out some of the areas that we've put in. So I'm going to pop my brush in and I'm just going to tap that off into the lid. So I want to try and get as much of that off my brush as possible. And it's still wet in places so you are going to pick up some of that colour. So this isn't dry brushing by any stretch of imagination, but it's just going to soften and blend some of those colours together and then introduce a little bit of texture. So we're flicking. And as you can see, I'm starting to pick up those pinks now. I might put some more of that salt water taffy on, get a bit more of those peachy oranges, but we'll see how it goes. That's better. So just by doing that, it's going to start hiding and camouflaging our canvas underneath. So follow that around the edges. And by now you can see that your brush is getting really quite wet. So back to our kitchen towel. Just gonna try and soak some of that moisture out. Half of the fun of mixed media is just learning to let go of, oh I like that bit there, at this stage you kind of want to go, actually this means almost nothing to me because by the time that you've finished it'll look totally different again anyway. Okay, so I'm going to give that another blast. Just to help that dry a little now that we've got that on there. And that should start to help some of these colours actually start to set. And good morning, Taz. Busy packing orders. <laughs> start to build up our dyes. Super busy, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, I know that there are a few issues with the website, but it's really good to see that everybody could uh, order other ways. Do, 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 do. 
I'm just going to use a little bit of a fine applicator for the glue on this one just because I don't want to end up getting too mucky mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I'm having a laugh at that one the idea of me not being too mucky I'm not a clean crafter <laughs> there we go so I'm going to pop that one just there so again I'm going by my sketch so if I bring that back in we've got this big long element here big long element there and if you wanted to push this up so it was actually coming off the canvas you could do now just be aware that some bits of your canvas may still be a little damp so if you do get bits on don't worry because we're gonna start spraying over the top of this too so there's going to be bits that retain the same colour as underneath and other bits that are going to pop out and be different okay so with that done next we're going to have a um that's going to be just here we're going to put some little tags coming out the bottom and some other elements up there so what you need to bear in mind at this point is is there any extra sense thing you want to do before you continue so this could be that you go back to your pretty acoustic and just have some slight texture or you can be a bit more bold so our photo is going to come back here we've got element that's going to come around here so i'm thinking it'd be really good to just bring in some of this now that we're going to be working over the top of our spray so as i said before you don't want to get hung up on what's going on on this bottom there because we're going to be painting it over the top of it in the majority of cases so i'm going to go over this one and down to this one you can see it's going to start picking up some of that color that's underneath that's fine just be aware of that and don't transfer it back to your pot if you can help it. And we can start to just use up what's on our palette knife to just get some of the areas of those other designs. So there we go. Like so. And let's do a little bit just kind of in here. So that we're starting to blend in some of the elements of our die cuts. element in the bottom corner has some texture to sit on okay now you try and kind of spread round round clearing off that pipe knife with nothing <laughs> yay sam has sound that's good So again, I'm going to give that a quick blast before we start sticking any of them. Puddles that you have, just block 
those off just so we can crack up okay so we have quite a few elements that I want to build on top of this so so that I'm not having to mask lots I'm going to do some very quick painting so let's get yourself a reasonably big brush not too big because obviously our pots are only little and let's start with naked but this time I'm going for the get crackled so hoping that we get some crackling effects going actually I can use what's in the lid so you just be really careful when you're going over your texture paste because while we've just dried the top of it it's literally just formed a skin so I'm just literally just gonna Dry brush over the top. A little bit more. The plan is that our window is still going to be lighter than our backdrop but we don't want it to come too far forward so we're knocking back that white okay one done so now i'm gonna swap to let's go tickled so this one's chalky rather than crackle you can see I'm very much sticking all to pinks at the moment. Now I have got some accent colours that I've pulled out. But I'm going to concentrate on keeping those on the foremost layer. So those I have in kind of a limey green. Using that pink just to break up some of the areas so it looks like it's still coming into that background, so it's quite a good match for the kitchen from Ingo. Okay, so far, so good. Now, at this point, we can go. Let's go. Because I have the naked in two different finishes, I can now hop to the chalk version and use that same colour onto this section down here, but without the crackle effect. So this is going to give us a much thinner layer of colour, and we can just use that. By brushing over the top of our texture paste and again it will pick up some of that colour underneath as well just because there are areas where it's still damp and the distress inks on the oxides are still going to be water reactive thinking yep yeah, okay I like elements of this I want a bit more of that warmth so we can go back to our spray and we can go okay just need to break up that pink a little bit more and I don't mind getting in there with my paintbrush because we don't want full-on orange <laughs> just want it to warm up those areas so try and break up the spatter it's a bit difficult in this kind of space because the camera is quite close to the canvas so I can't really aim from high which is one of the things you probably want to do with that just so that you don't end up having to brush it lots okay that's starting a bit more like the colour I was thinking Can 
see some of that texture paste is still a bit wet. Again, that I do. Okay. So now to decide which photo is going to be on the main image. really fit with our sketch. Whereas that one's a bit bigger so it can take it a little bit more. Although our sketch is that way we can actually stretch this out. So let's go with that. Thank you Tess. I'm just going to roughly cut this so it's not about doing a lovely neat straight edge because you can actually wobble. <laughs> so this is why I was like, oh, I don't need my trimmer today. I'm just going to roughly chop it instead. And that one can go. It's quite high up on my sketch, so I'm thinking just there. And I don't mind that it's going to cover up quite a bit that detail, but if if that bothers you, if you take a knife and just snip along there, and then you can either slide that under for it will still lift, or if not, just round off that corner. I think just there. And this one and remember how I was saying about stretching your images we can do that by putting the two together so again not going to be neat chopping this purposely wiggling You want to do it so that you actually cut into this image so that it starts to actually overlap you can do so let's try that so we have and it's going to be quite tricky for you to see on the actual screen but we've got a little bit of skirt that's going to come up here and then we can actually cut around our hole and i'm going to take it then up roughly in the limited section here and let's try that. That's it. So we kind of got skirt brace that way, skirt brace that way, and there we go. Now, just because we want it to look slightly more higgledy piggledy, I'm going to offset it that way. So let's get our gel medium brush back. And again, going to really block that so we get a lot of that moisture out. If you have a couple of dirty brushes, you can just use a fresh one. And we want the gel medium. So let's pop that there. And we can stick that down. Now there is going to be a bit of a texture underneath where we're actually applying these. So if you are working with thinner papers, you can pop some card underneath so that you actually have a bit of a stronger surface to do. And this is where I'm going to get really messy with my gluing because it doesn't matter. So keep looking at your sketch going okay. That's going to go roughly there. So we're still getting some of this die cut in there. Get a bit more of that gel medium underneath. So remember when I was saying about keeping hold of your little torn up pieces of paper? That can be where you start to use them if you find that you've got like big gaps underneath. So you can just use this to just push up and give you something to stick to. 
my window frame there's actually two layers of card there so it's not too too different if you're kind of getting into the realms of doing like three to five then you're going to want to do that it's all very quiet today so, are you crafting along or are you just so engrossed in what i'm doing <laughs> Again, don't worry if you get paint here, there and everywhere. Just try and keep it clear from your faces because we can work with elements around here to actually help those bed in. Cool, blimey. We are rattling through the time today. So, who would like me to carry on going? Or who would like to stop here and... carry on next week so I'm just cutting out one of the postcards and while I make the tour let me know I'm going to just use a little brush for this oh I was going to get really really mucky so let's brush that that way and that's going to go up there I'm not going to press it down around the edges just yet just because there's a few other bits and pieces I want to include so let's stick that there for a moment and I'm just going to chop around right here okay then just happy for me to carry on I don't mind. So I'm just very roughly cutting this out with a very slight border around it. Can't even say it's going to be that even. <laughs> so there we go. And again. So this little circle goes in front on our sketch. circle goes behind it so I have a slightly bigger clock and that we can pop behind I'm going to do the same again and as we start to get up towards the top layers our brushes can become smaller and smaller so that we start to get more intricate in where we're putting paint and things And I want to add some flowers as well, so I've outsorted some flowers that we can put on. And these will help kind of build up this element just down here. And again, just make sure you get your clock the right way up. So it's going to go there. So I'm just going to pop a little bit more gel medium just underneath. My postcard so that actually sits down there like so. So then we have some other little elements that we can use or die cuts. So let's on with some first of all I'm just gonna grab another piece of this paper. I'm just gonna use that to kind of guide for where I want to head next. So I'm thinking just kind of there. We need to build something. A little bit more just for this piece here. And I'm going to go there. So again you won't see very much of these so I'm not 
too worried about making everything matchy matchy. It's a bit like visual shorthand. So I'm going into that space there with something to do something. <laughs> focal point and this is kind of almost like the afterthought or like a, a summary if you think of it that way the main event and what happened <laughs> so put that down there now you do want to make sure that this bit is adhered because obviously if it's not and then you're sticking stuff on top of it you can make it cams unstable scrunch it up if you want to to create more texture that way but I'm gonna pull out some little die cuts is it windy where you are it's very windy here be part of my something up there and again you want to get rid of any little blobs of gel medium so I'm just going to tap over the top and that's going to even those out a little bit and let's go for another bit of foliage kind of corner piece here and I think that would look quite good there and it's going to brush loosely over the top now one of the reasons that you're going to want to do these bits a little bit looser is if you need to conceal any wires or joins of other die cuts that you're going to layer on or flowers other embellishments So far, so good. And we have another bit down here, which I was thinking we could kind of repeat that image. Or we could go for something a little different. So look at my sketch. That's a little bit big, but that's okay. Rather than using one of the smaller ones, what we can do is actually crop into it. So. use the floor as a guide let's start there and again always looking at our sketch and going that needs to go up there around there and it still needs to be a little bit thinner ratio wise there we go that's going to go down into this bottom corner just here now on our sketch it literally goes to the edge so that can exist just there. So a little bit on the canvas so that we can wiggle. We can pop that just on there. And then we've got two little bits down here. So I'm going to probably pop in another clock so that we're mimicking that. But then we're going to need something else that we can sit with that. So I'm thinking let's use one of the smaller film strips. And let's go for that one. And I'm just going to go for the black. And again, we'll, we can include another black film strip up in this top section. So each time it's like, all oh, that happens there, that needs to happen up there too. Okay. So 
so in terms of horizontal width this bit down here is quite narrow on the sketch so I'm going to keep that tucked under and then our clock we can actually have that go over the top and if you've got some silicon glue you could use that just to pop it up a bit more you could use a foam pad but they don't tend to last as long so if this is something that you're going to want hanging on a wall probably the best thing to do is to use that silicon glue and that can go just there now I have one of these little die cut sections so this is from the small gothic window and we can use that just to do one of these little page flags so that's going to slide underneath our photo and stick up so it needs to be a little bit shorter so about there and get another one Honestly, this is why we like young reading, because at least we got wiggle. <laughs> but sometimes he just wiggles too much. <laughs> from this big window and we're going to mimic that over here so this is going to come down under there now if you've done that bit of paper and it's in the way and it's stuck yeah, it's pretty stuck then we can just chop in because so. I'm going to want to disguise some of this anyway even though in the sketch it shows it being all nice and neat it's a mixed media you don't do nice and neat so if you want to work along with this sketch i believe it's up on the group so you can join in See what you make with it so i actually have another idea for this sketch that is really going to be going back to my roots and that's going to be a typography inspired one just because that lovely big area that you have in the sketch is just crying out for some type people are happy to carry on I'm looking at that thinking 
okay well can I mimic that window down here and I've got the little small gothic window I'm just thinking it would be quite nice to just kind of pull out an element of that but not all of it so I'm going to give it a quick chop <laughs> and do keep all the bits that you snip off as well because you can use those elsewhere just to add a bit more texture waste nothing <laughs> yeah I'm terrible for keeping off cut for ages <laughs> and I'm going to just tuck that in maybe just down just a touch in there not technically in line with the sketch but yeah <laughs> Leave us the next bit. So, one thing that the sketch doesn't have on it is anywhere to put the sentiment. So, even though I'm working on mixed media, I still like to put text in there somewhere, somehow. So, I have some little headlight text that I've done in a mould that I can include. So, I'm thinking just there, just to tidy up that edge, will work nicely. Now you're going to want to put lots of gel medium on the back of these because they're not perfectly flat packed. So the other thing to bear in mind is of course that this will be wet for a little bit. So just be wary of that when you're moving stuff around your canvas that is still wet. If it needs any extra just on the ends then just pop it under but I think it should be okay. So I'm getting there where I'm starting to become happy with my layout. But we want to build up these areas a little bit more. So at this point, I kind of jump to the other end of the spectrum and go for my most raised elements next before kind of infilling with the lit ones. So, just going to grab this flower here. And let's go. Decisions, decisions. I'm going to go up there. I think that worked quite well. Because obviously we're going to have more flowers than just that one. So at this point, just kind of go, yep, yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Next. <laughs> Don't stick anything down because you could end up redoing it quite easily. So let's stick that one up there. And otherwise, I just tend to just loop them up underneath. Especially if I'm doing like this kind of thing where I'm going, okay, that might go over there. I might bring that down there just to finish that off. That one up there. And again, because I've used one down there. And because we've got three in the pack, we may as well use that last one. And put that just there. So ones that have a bit of a sturdier back usually just need a little bit more encouragement to lie where you want them to go. Now because I've put this one up here, which kind of feels like it finishes off this vine nicely, then suddenly that one doesn't look right. So don't be afraid to go, actually, I'm not sure on that one. And try it elsewhere. Let's try it down here. Let's put that one where that one is. Put that one in the corner. And it's going to look different again. We could go, actually, let's take that one out and put it down this bottom corner. How's that work then? Dee -dee. 
I think it does need that deep pink, pink one on there to kind of lighten the background. And whether we kind of balance that out with a lighter one. Or we can use that vine and some little rosebuds. So again, not perfect here, but also for shorthand. And go, okay, that one. That one there. And that one there. So with these smaller ones, you can usually just snip those off. But I just wanted to see how that's going to work the help ways. Getting happy with that. Still think it needs something down here. So let's pop that one in there. I think that's starting to look kind of what I have in mind. Go down there. Yeah, that feels better. Okay, so now we can stick those. Now I'm going to try and tuck these wires as neatly as possible because we're going to want to stick those to our canvas. And this is where we're going to use lots of gel medium. <laughs> so I'm going to try and make sure I keep little elements like the little touches of texture paste in this bottom corner. Let's just pull that up around. Good blob of gel medium, and that one can go back there. So what are your crafty plans for the weekend? Are you going to an event? Are you creating a fun project? Are you doing something to help um, the Ukraine by going and making ribbons? So I know one of the local fabric shops is doing Actually, mm, quite like that there. Uh, decisions, decisions. He's feeling decisive, but now I'm not sure. <laughs> hey, Sam. <laughs> Just because we have no one, we could put in to there. Uh, Just be conscious and not over overdoing it with the flowers, she says. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to cut these off. Not one to do with your fabric scissors, I have to say. <laughs> does damage them eventually but most will cope with it okay I tend to leave just a little bit of a, of a wire stem there
So if at this point you're thinking, I'm really not sure about these colours, what, am I, what can I do? You can go back in with your gesso and obliterate the whole lot if you want. You could just whitewash it. So that's where we're going to dry brush that gesso over the top and it's just going to lighten those colours. You could go black gesso and totally change it again. Also, you want to avoid your photos. We can start to introduce things like a contrasting colour. So, I think I've done all those now. And if you want to, you can include some little stamped images. So let's pull out this one. So this one is from the new stamp that I launched yesterday. But I'm just thinking it would look quite nice to have something just fill that corner there. And there's some little, little flowers as part of the stamp set. And they've got these little open stems and they're really good for kind of filling in we just need to have an element that just pokes through and joins like that between those photos and we can do the same between the photo and the canvas like so so i just took that end in and stick down that flower Okay, so, so far so good. Now we can start to get a bit more 3D. So I'm just going to get one of these die cuts and just scrunch it up a bit, just because I want to kind of have something that's going to be a bit more dimensional, because it's looking a bit flat. And I want this to be more like a frame. So let's put a bit gel medium on the one end. And let's scrunch it up a bit and push that where we need to. A bit of gel medium on the other end. And I'm going to go up there. So let's place that down there. That's going to start to give us a little bit more of a depth to our work. And we have some different lines here. So again, if you want to spray these first, you can do. If you're feeling really brave, or if there's elements that you're not sure with, and what we can actually do is we can actually spray it with, our, with the actual element on our piece. So we're going to get a little bit of a background. Oh, Deb's going to be tidying the craft room. Yeah. I seem to be doing mine every single weekend at the moment just because of the number of projects and things that I'm doing. So, and there we go. So I've got a little bit of a ghost here. I'm just out picking up. Do a quick dry. So you can see that we've got this kind of ghost of the image and then we're going to pop that as part of our canvas as well. So you're kind of getting two lots of imagery for one little element way of making your die cuts go a lot further. So, as you all want me to continue, do you like longer videos or do you 
Do you also like some short ones too? We have a TikTok account that I haven't really done much with. So it's quite hard to try and think of short things that I can show in any kind of detail. But that doesn't mean to say that I shouldn't be trying a bit harder. <laughs> Okay, so let's go, let's, let's try another bit of line. So this time I'm going to go over this side. And this time let's spray. I think I'm going to go back to the oranges. give it a bit more of a definition. So if I bring that down just so you can see that's good to know Linda. So I quite like long videos too but I tend to do like most of my graph video watching when I'm not exactly on top form. So I like ones that have lots of Soothing descriptions, but very little music. So, you know, like the typical sort of happy bouncy. No, I can't be doing that. Nice, gentle. <laughs> okay. I've got some swirly ones too. So, given that we've done a kitchen mingo one. Uh, so what is happy one? I think it's about time as we did a bit more sparkle. So I'm going to look for an area that looks like it needs a little bit more sparkle, and then I can spray it over there. And very carefully remove it. Down there. 
So typically when I'm trying to do online or live streaming, I try and stick to an hour. But sometimes it doesn't always work like today. And there's other times that I'm just I'm just not in that mood to be kind of rushed. <laughs> it stays a little bit like that. So just there. So very carefully just gonna tap that down. we're getting in some nice interesting marks in our background we're getting our die cuts I think we need just a colour die cut over here because it's looking a little pale so, let's go for another swirly one so we've got swirly down here so we could do a swirly up here and I think because the colours that we have going on I think that's going to be another orangey one so let's go great if not just let it float okay and I'm gonna get corner of that kitchen towel and just gently blot away some of that excess wet so we don't want to take too much away because otherwise we'll be taking the colour too I just don't want it to be too wet as we're carrying on always going to start transferring where we don't want it okay and with that it's starting kind of marbly which is cool so it needs a bit more colour in these areas and I don't want to necessarily blast it with a spray and get the full pelt so I'm thinking maybe a little bit of water just to float it a little mm, so I have a water spray let's just get another one there and little tiny spatters if you can do like a little half spritz, but it doesn't always work. I'm just going to get a paintbrush, any watercolour paintbrush will do. Get it wet, and I'm just going to brush that colour away from the face so you're not getting like speckles. And of course for these sprays you can watercolour with them so if you have somewhere where you want to just add a bit more colour you can do that too. I'm just going to take some of those elements and just brush over them. So where we sprayed the full on colour you're going to have that depth of colour. Where your bits were still white, we're going to keep those paler because we did that initial spray with water. 
and the anything may you don't want that texture we can just brush that out so some bits you'll like the spatters other bits you'll be like just want that kind of subtly blending out so like around this edge here so I'm just going to give the bottle of spray a little shake and that's just to remix the mica and if we take the top out then we can just watercolour with it too so if we go okay I definitely want that darker under there we can start to actually take that straight onto our canvas that we start to create a little bit more depth in places so this little corner here not that darker so that when it's lighter it's actually going to pop up now same down here if we can bring some of that color in so just using what's left on my brush we can start to just blend that in do the same underneath this flower here and just doing little bits like that's going to make it look a lot better While I've still got my little brush, I'm going to try and pick out the wording. The little medium, you know, mediums are a handy palette sometimes. <laughs> so. Now bear in mind, the brush is still quite wet. You're not going to get full on coverage. That's okay. I'm just going to follow that round. And it's a bit like um, when you colour an embossing powder, it's a good way of making sure they stay in your lines having the raised surface because we can just brush across it rather than on top of it. And it's just going to catch that top edge. So, a little bit more paint. So my inspiration for this one is very much going back to my roots, going back to dance. start to blend it in around the bottom too so if we pick up a little bit more water on the brush we're going to get a thinner version of that same colour and we can just go around the edges almost like distressing it and then give the brush a wash get that paint out and then we can blend that back in just soften that transition so you don't get like a and here's our painted border kind of look and then there. so it's still going to help your words stand out so now is your opportunity to kind of step back look at it I have the ability to see um, thumbnail which is always useful and you can look at it and go actually there's bits of that that need to lift, there's some that needs to go darker. So mm, yeah, let's go chalky. So I'm gonna go back to my naked, which is the lighter colour that we did just here, but in the chalk. I'm just gonna get a little bit of my brush, so I really don't want too much, and I'm just gonna kind of in a few little elements onto our texture paste and things like that so we start to pull those back out just 
for another look on the preview I can see they're starting to get a little bit lost we don't want to lose them entirely so we do that and we can do the same down here now you could do this with gesso if you wanted to um, and it, but you may find that it just stands out a little too much and I think it would be really nice actually to kind of put these with a bit more colour so that that stands out. So I start up here. And back into the water and we can just blend that out. I'm not taking out all my splodges down here. Technical term that splodges. <laughs> and let's blend that out again. A bit more paint. And when your brush starts to get a bit dry, then you can go back into the water. That's going to knock that bit back. And that looks so much better than that, actually. I'm going to do that bit too. Let's get a bit more water. And it just helps to kind of soften that look. And you can do a little bit of photo tinting too. If you need to kind of get your photos to blend a little bit better. So this is just the chalky. It's nothing fancy. You can just go... And pop that in there and again as your brush starts to dry out just put some more water in and let it blend out so by going around like this we're going to help her stand out from the background Where do I want to go next? Well, we've still got these stars that are showing in this paper up here. So I could actually just bring that in there. So I'm going to take this up to the top corner. So let's bring that down a little bit, as you can see. And bring in the oxide. Let's be brave. That is if I can get the lid off. <laughs> uh, as I said, planned this, did the paint, forgot to do the sprays. So, new colours. Yay. of an image. <laughs> soften them. Let's just do a little spritz of water. Uh, 
to do. And that kind of finishes off that little bit just there nicely. Mm. Actually, rather than going for that one, I will have my own two there. Oh god. Because it's paper to paper, it shouldn't hurt. Let's just get in there. Did. did do a little bit of a mad thing. I pulled out something I haven't used in ages. And I thought it might be a good mix, but we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to pop some glue. Quite heavily into my piece. Always makes me think of um, when we were uh, working on a railway for my nephew with my father and all. Don't know why I'm feeling quite so nostalgic this month. Maybe because it's my birthday, isn't it? Not today. Later in the month. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit there. And let's go for a little bit just here. And because we've done it there. We do it in a little way down here, so good way just finishing off that up in there. There we go. I'm just gonna try and clean my finger off on the corner somewhere. If it stays put, great. If it doesn't, oh well. I want it to go dark around his outside edges, I'm thinking. Just looking at the colours and thinking, it just needs something to kind of frame it. So, you could go lighter if you wanted to, um, but I just think it just needs darker. And hiding away. In my little stack of paint and some rose. So hopefully that should be the point colour, just to darken down those edges a bit. So where the paper is, it's quite roughly where I'm heading, but my poor knife. Key. <laughs> so we can pop that on there. Again, this isn't about having it perfectly blended and To try and stay clear of um, your elements where you've sprayed onto it, though, because you don't want to lose that. And carefully go up there, and don't forget your sides of your canvas. So. Sides are quite important when it comes to painting, even if you're just a, like a traditional 
landscape artist because it's one of the ways uh, you know years from now people will be able to tell if it's a fake or not <laughs> so. brush places with it. So the rose has like a, a metallic finish to it so it's again a bit more sparkly. So it's something to bear in mind maybe you want to have that particular area sparkle or if you want to keep it matte. And at any point, because we're using water-based sprays, if you want to lighten up areas, then you can flick water at it and you can lift it up. So, the only thing that won't lift up is any acrylics that you put on, because obviously they're acrylic. And once they're dry, they're dry. And I'm just going to start brushing in a little bit of that rose into our background as well. So if there's areas that you think that just needs to now sit back a little bit further because we want our flags to sit up and we can go between those and make those flags pop up. If you're going okay, want to put a bit of shadow in there, let's go around there then. And then we can flick it back down just to blend it in. We can put some colour into our flowers. So by now we're getting very little paint on our brush. So it's more pigment than it is anything else. And we can do the same with our flower over here. So instead of having it look like it went on there white, we can just add a little bit of colour. And if you want to go back in and do some shading and things you can do. But it all depends on how much you want to draw the attention of the eye. So the more detailed you get, the more you're going to bring that element to the front. And the more general and soft you are, then it's going to go further back. So, I still think it needs some orangey elements back in it, but we'll see how that kind of dries. So what I would say is when you get to this stage, walk away for a bit. So go have lunch, have a cup of tea, take your pick, gin and tonic if you're feeling in the mood. But don't get so focused on it that you can't see the wood for the trees. And I'm going to say trial for now, dead too. So take care and what I will do is I will pop up a photo with it done both in the Pretty Gets Pretty group and onto my page too. So take care for now. It could be fun me ending this because I'm like, where's the mouse gone? <laughs> so take care and bye. Audio gonna be fun. <laughs> it's behind you. Pantomime style. It's behind you.